Welcome back to ZP Environmental Science Chapter 4. We're going to continue our discussion on biomes. This is Part 2. There will probably be Part 3 and Part 4 to our biomes discussion. And so we want to start with uh, temperate seasonal forests. So uh, this is a very productive uh, biome. It receives over one meter of precipitation annually. And uh, I'll show you where it is on the map in just a second. It's dominated by broadleaf deciduous trees. And these trees, uh, they change color in the fall. They drop their leaves in the winter. And then they regrow green leaves in the uh, spring. A very productive area. The soils contain lots of nutrients. So warmer summers and uh and this causes a lot of decomposition, and it's going to have a lot of nutrients in the soil compared to boreal forest and other biomes as well. Supports a lot of um, organisms in this seasonal forest. So here it is on the map. You have some in north or the eastern United States, most of Europe, parts of China, and Japan. Uh, here's the graph. Uh, you see that there is a 12-month growing season, and unfortunately the precipitation did not uh, show up on this graph, but it's right about here. Uh, sort of not super high precipitation, but fairly consistent, and uh, the temperature sort of um, goes along like this, uh, dependent on what month you're in. The woodland and shrubland area. You're familiar with this area because you live in Southern California. We live in a shrubland. We call it the chaparral in Southern California. However, uh, in Australia or Southern Africa or the Mediterranean, they call it different things. This is considered a hot spot on earth. And so we'll talk about hot spots later, but just know that chaparral or the woodland shrubland biomes are uh, hot spots on earth. You're familiar with the fact that there's hot, dry summers and uh, rainy winters in this uh, or in this biome. You have a 12-month growing season, but plant growth is uh, constrained by low precipitation in the summer. And we know this because we don't get a whole lot of rain down here. And then uh, relatively low temperatures in the, the winter. Not too low, but relatively low. Wildfire fires are common, and so plants in this biome are well adapted uh, to both fire and drought. In fact, the plants are so well adapted, some of them depend on wildfire uh, fires in order to reproduce. And the seeds are released when a wildfire comes through. So there's a high frequency of wild, wildfires uh, in a shrubland area. Here's the graph. This is likely Montana de Oro in San Luis Obispo. You may be familiar with San Luis Obispo. Very beautiful spot. And unfortunately, the graph didn't give us our temperature. The temperature is sort of like something like this, fairly consistent. And then precipitation uh, dips like this uh, on your graph. And so, although it has a 12-month growing season, it is limited by the precipitation uh, for the year. Very productive system, very unique organisms in this system. Temperate grassland and cold desert. Uh, in the temperate grassland, you have the lowest average annual precipitation of any temperate biome. So in that temperate latitudes, uh, it has the lowest average annual precipitation. This is the Great Plains on North America. We'll show you that on the map. It has cold, harsh winters hot, dry summers. And so because we have insufficient precipitation in the summer and cold temperatures uh, in the winter, plant growth is pretty constrained. So therefore what we get are lots of grasses and flowering plants, uh, low growing flowering plants. Uh, again, this biome has a very high frequency of wildfires and uh, it is unique in that it has frequent grazing by animals. And so uh, long ago, by American bison used to be uh, frequent grazers in this area. And so here's our graph and picture. You see 
Here's the bison grazing in that grassland. Here's where it's located in the United States, and then parts of Russia, um, Europe, and then the Middle East. Here's our graph, average temperature, and then precipitation. And so uh, that's important. 12 month growing season, however, not a whole lot of growth throughout the year. The last biome that we're gonna talk about is the tropical rainforest. And so in the tropics, you have a very consistent temperature, very consistent precipitation, a lot of growth. This is gonna be mainly located between 20 degrees north and south of the equator. And so you find this in Central and South America, Western Africa, Southeast Asia, and parts of Australia. Precipitation is frequent and consistent, and the temperature has little variation. Tropical rainforests are extremely important, and they hold more biodiversity per hectare than any other terrestrial biome. Very important that you understand that. About approximately two-thirds of the Earth's terrestrial species are in the tropical rainforest. Tropical rainforests have um, very poor soil nutrients, and this is uh, simply because uh, the nutrients get eaten up by all sorts of organisms, bacteria, fungus, uh, pretty much immediately once things die uh, because of the warm and moist temperature, uh, warm temperatures and moist uh, area. And so therefore the soils are very nutrient poor. Unfortunately, farmers around the world are cutting down the rainforest and deforestation in order to prepare agriculture, but the forest is really poor. So it requires a lot of, uh, a lot of fertilizers. It requires a lot of pesticides and fungicides because of uh, the, the type of region it is. Very, uh, a lot of pest and a lot of uh, fungus are in this region. And typically they have to move fairly quickly because the soil just won't hold the agricultural lands for very long and they just have to cut down more forest, unfortunately. So this is a very, very productive, the most productive system that we'll talk about. Here's a picture of the tropical rainforest. You can see very, very dense. Here's where tropical rainforests are, right, on the map, Southeast Asia, Western Africa, Central and South America. Very high precipitation, very consistent temperature, 12-month growing season. Remember that when we talk about biomes, that climate, so temperature and precipitation is what places these biomes on uh, Earth. And so the distribution of these biomes is based off of climate. There will be more uh, biome videos to come. Uh, and so watch for part three and part four uh, soon.